be back in the house of the Lord. We want to go to the book of Romans this morning for our text reading in uh, chapter 9. Turning there. Good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning and thankful for the health and strength that He's given to each one of us and uh, thankful for all the blessings He's blessed us with. We consider it a privilege to be able to read God's word before a congregation and I know that his word will not return unto him void so Amen. it may not be uh, some of you may not be what I, you want to hear others it may be a blessing but anyway we want to read uh, uh, out of, the, out of uh, chapter 9 and we're going to see some things here I, I hope that will be a blessing to you concerning the uh, the mercy and the grace that God has on us, uh, each one of us. So in verse uh, 9 of chapter 9, we want to start a reading. For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. Amen. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to, the, to election might stand, not of works, but of him that called. Call. Now, this word election means that God foreordained before the world began everyone that would be saved. Right. He chose, he chose his, he chose his own, and some people, some people can't grasp that. Some people can't understand that. But we'll we'll see some things here just in a minute that will point a little bit closer to this because we know that God foreknew all things. We know that He created the heavens and the earth. We know that He shaped them. He He separated them. He put everything on the earth that He wanted to be put on there. He put me and you here, and He put all the animals and everything that. He did, he did it all, Amen. and he did it well. And so we see here that these children that were that he's talking about uh, were both born, and that they were neither one of them good or evil. But it says here in verse uh, in verse twelve, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Amen. Now that is right reverse from what. It was in the Jewish customs. The the older person, the older male, was always the one that carried the name that, that they served after his father's death. But it says here it's going to be right reversed. And so he said uh, here he said uh, it, it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger as it is written. Now listen, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Man. Now he's saying up here in uh, verse 11 that neither having done any good or evil, but he said, I hate one and I love the other. Right. So this tells us this morning that God foreknew all things. Amen. That he made a choice before the world was. He made a choice before any person ever breathed the breath of air. He made that choice, and he set it up like he wanted it set up. And so this morning, when we when we see things going on in this world, uh, and we think about questioning them, remember this, that God's in charge. He don't make no mistakes. Amen. And what he does is right. Regardless of what you and I think about the situation, God knows all, and he, he makes the right decisions. Amen. And so notice here, again... He says here uh, in verse 14, what shall we then, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? No, there's not. The Bible says God forbid Amen. that we should think that God has any unrighteous part about him because all that, all that he does is his will. He does what he pleases. And what he pleases is good, and what he 
what he does is just and we as God's people when we have these little mishaps and these little accidents or these little sicknesses or this this or that we can't point our finger at God and say God you shouldn't have done that to me because I'm the best person in church mm -hmm. because listen you may be the best person in church you, in God's eyes you may be but listen what he does he does it for your own good he does Amen. it for his pleasure and you you just be patient and 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 take the sickness take the bad bumps whatever it is you take it and say god it's your will i'm i'm depending on you to take care of whatever it is and so this is what he said here what shall we say then is is there unrighteousness with god and so we net we always always need to remember this that god is righteous amen and there's no fault whatsoever in god and i hope that everyone here accepts that fact that god is perfect and that there's no fault in him so because the bible says it is for he said to moses i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy and i will have compassion on whom i will have compassion Amen. so this morning <clears throat> god has his plan and what he does he's already planned it out and so if he if he has compassion on you you thank him if he lets things happen to you that you don't feel like that should happen to you, you thank him. Right. Because he's right. Amen. And you can be pleasing to God this morning more so by by not, not hammering and grappling, growling and all about what he's doing and just say, well, you're my father and I'll do what you want me to do if I can and I want you to do what you think I need to do. And because... A lot of times we do things that God has to chastise us with and to remind us, hey, that you're, you're not doing like a Christian ought to do and you need to get your act in order. Amen. And you need to pay attention to what uh, I'm, I'm trying to tell you through the Holy Spirit because, listen, we that are saved this morning, the Holy Spirit speaks to our souls. And if it don't speak to your soul, you need to do a little searching. You need to little be a, do a little bit of praying. You need to do some things about this because the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within you because he sent it when he, Jesus left this earth. He sent the Holy Spirit back here as our comforter. Amen. And he comes and he makes his abode with us. And so this morning, when the Holy Spirit speaks to your hearts this morning, listen, you know the difference between it and Satan. And Satan will try to get in there and hinder you and speak to you too. But listen to that Holy Spirit because he knows what he he knows what he's sent here to do, and that is to comfort and to warn and to tell you the things that are that, that you're not doing right. And so here he says, back again, uh, so <clears throat> For he has mercy on whom he will have mercy, and compassion on whom he will have compassion. And then it, so then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Amen. And so God is the only one this morning that can show mercy to you. Amen. You can thank your your banker because he'll loan you a hundred thousand dollars and showing mercy. No, he's wanting a hundred and fifty back. But listen, God has mercy on us this morning and and he lets us do some of the things that we do and he understands because jesus is there on the right hand of the father making intercessions for us and he's telling he's he's talking to god about us because his blood jesus christ's blood that was shed on the cross of calvary has covered our sins amen and so he this morning can turn to god and say he's mine and god God cannot disagree with Jesus Christ. Amen. Because Jesus Christ came to this world and died for all those that would ever believe in him. And so this morning he says in verse 17, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Now Pharaoh was the one that was in Egypt. Pharaoh was the one that was in charge of all the stuff going on in Egypt. And, and he's the one that tried to kill all the Jews. And he's the one that tried to do this and do that. But he said, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. Now listen, Pharaoh had the people in slavery down there, and he wanted to kill them, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't let them go out 
and, and do what they wanted to according to their worship and all to the Lord, but he put his thumb down on them and he, he, he wouldn't let them do anything. But God said here, I've, I've raised Pharaoh, I've appointed Pharaoh, and I've raised him up that I might show my power. And he did show his power. Amen. When Pharaoh, when Pharaoh got so strong, he sent Moses there. Moses said, Pharaoh, you let my people go. Amen. And they, he would not, he would not, he would not, and, 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 and the plagues came and everything. But all the time, God was getting glory out of this because right. they knew where it was coming from. Even though Pharaoh denied it, he knew where the, that all those things that were happening to him come. And he says, I raised him up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And this morning, you can, you can, mention, you can mention anything in the Bible. The people understands about the Red Sea. They understand about the plagues. And his power is still reigning. And he's still getting glory and honor for it. And so this morning, because the Lord sends someone that's against him, he does it because he knows what he's doing. Amen. And, and like he did with Pharaoh. And there he says in verse 18, Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. Right. And whom he will, he hardeneth. Right. And people this morning, when he hardens that heart, when that person, when when God hardens that heart, listen, that person is in bad shape. You're right. He's in bad shape, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll say this: he's in he's in he's in a condition that he, if he dies, he'd go to hell. Amen. And but listen, he says, he says thou. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. And so those that have mercy on them is the ones that the Holy Spirit speaks to their hearts. And listen, man in himself cannot turn to God. Right. He, he is not capable of doing it because he's a sinful creature and he has... He don't want. He don't have anything to do with God. That's it. But listen, God will turn that man to Him, and He that soul will be saved. And that's the only way through mercy that this soul can be saved. So He says, "Therefore hath He mercy on whom He will have mercy, and whom He will He pardon." Thou will say then unto me, "Why doth He yet find fault? For who hath who hath resisted His will?" Well, they all were resisting his will back in the Old Testament. They were they wouldn't serve him. Uh, he done everything you can read over in Nehemiah and, and, and uh, other places there, where that he come to them and he he done everything in this world for him. He, he and he even carried them through the wilderness and he gave them light and he gave them a cloud to keep them from getting too hot and he gave them food and water to drink and they still wouldn't accept him. And he says, Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he not he yet find fault? For who has resisted his will? But nay, but O man, who art thou that replieth against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? And so this morning we see that, that the human flesh has the desire to aggravate God or try to fuss right. at God or try to turn God and, and make him, his will be different. Because he says here, who will say anything to God for the way that he made him? Now notice, here's, here, here's the thing. Shall the thing form say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me this way? And so many times, people, that is one of the flesh's deepest uh, hatreds towards God is why he made him like he did. Mm -hmm. Because, listen, the flesh this morning is not saved. Right. The flesh will die and rot. Mm -hmm. But the flesh, as long as it's living, wants to do what it wants to do. Now, when you were saved, and when I was saved, the flesh wasn't saved. And it's right. still just as sinful as it ever was. But, listen, it wants to do what it wants to do. And so that's the warfare that's going on between your spirit and your flesh. And that's that constant warfare. And, and Paul speaks about this warfare. And he said, oh, wretched man that I am. Paul, an apostle called of God to preach 
to the Gentile. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. Mm -hmm. Because, listen, this warfare is going on. And, and it was in Paul's day, too. And so this flesh is sinful, and it will never, it will never concede uh, to God and say that he's my Savior because, and, and you say, well, my flesh will. No, you're deceived when you mm -hmm. say that this flesh is going to accept Jesus Christ as his Savior because it won't. But this spirit, this spirit within will. Now the flesh, once it pays this debt of dying, then it'll be changed if it's saved, and it, it will then be a glorified body. But until then, you're going to have to live with this old sinful flesh, and and walk uh, uh, up and down the road with a with a with a with a flesh that's sinful, and with a spirit that's dwelling in it that's saved. Mm -hmm. And it's a warfare going on all the time. And so here he said here that uh, in in uh, in verse 20 of uh, of chapter nine. Nay, but old man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why, have, why hast thou made me thus? Now notice, has not the potter, and the potter here is a type of God. The potter is the one that shapes a vessel on a spinning wheel, and it's made out of clay or mud or whatever, but he shapes it. Now notice, has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump? Now notice he said the same lump. We're all of that one lump where there's not no two lumps. There's one lump and he's, he's taken that off of that one lump and that one lump is the world and he's taking these from this world and he's shaping these people. He's shaping it on this, on this spinner and he says, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? He has. And that's, that's why this morning that I said this morning when Jesus, when God in the, uh, chose those that he wanted for his and chose the others that would be uh, uh, sent to hell. Mm -hmm. Listen. He shapes the ones he wants, and he makes them like he wants them, or that they will be candidates for salvation and they can be saved. But he says here that he shapes, he shapes the lump, and he takes the lump and he shapes one vessel into honor and another into dishonor. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering? the vessel of wrath. And this morning he's saying, why, why does God, so many that he's, that are shaped and are wrathful, why does he continually let them not serve him, continually let them go on and do these things that they're not supposed to do? Why don't he wipe them out of the way and get them out of his way? Well, because he's a merciful God. Amen. And because this morning that he made them that way. And people, I, I, I can't, I don't know who he made one way or who he made. I can't look at a man or a woman and say, I can see that you're saved because I see your soul. I don't know. Right. And this morning, this, 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 this thing that we're saying this morning is just like a man sowing wheat. It's going out to every one of us. And listen, we need to, we need to, listen to this and we need to do a soul searching about Amen. ourselves and, and try to examine ourselves and to find out if we are truly a Christian or are, are, are we been deceived by the devil. Right. Because your, your soul your soul is a, pre, is a precious thing. It will never die. Amen. The breath of life was blown into it when he created Adam and, and and he blowed the breath of life into Adam. And all of us, even Eve, has sprung from Adam. And we've got that breath of life in our souls. And it's going to live forever. And it's going to either go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Or it's going to be down there in hell with the rest of the devil's people. And so you can, you can, you can well understand that, I know. And so here he says this right here. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessel of mercy. 
Amen. And listen, this morning when he blesses someone and he is he is sure, he's giving mercy to that soul, listen, that that person, listen, realizes that he's giving him mercy and he gives him honor and glory. And those old people that will not accept uh, <clears throat> nothing that, that is, 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 is told to them that are shaped in this in this terrible shape, listen, they just will not accept it. And so this is, that's the thing of it. Now, <clears throat> notice here, and that he might make known the riches of his glory, in verse 23, on the vessel of mercy, which he hath afore prepared unto glory. See, he's afore, before prepared that man. And so he made him, when he made him, he made him for heaven. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jew only, but also of the Gentile. And you know that the Jew, the Jew would not accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. They said, no, he's not my Savior. He's a good man. He was a good man. But they seen him. They raised the dead. They seen him heal the sick. They seen him do all of these things. And then they seen him go to the cross of Calvary and die for their sins. And they said, yeah, he's not my Savior. He's coming later, but he's not dying now. And they rejected him, and they still reject him. Right. And they're looking for him. They're looking for him. And those that are living will see him come back again, and he'll come back. But listen, look at all the all those that have been looked that have not accepted Jesus Christ when he came. How many? How many is lost? Right. Because they they won't reject. They won't. They can't accept him. And so. <clears throat> So here we go. Even us whom he hath called, not only the Jew only, but also the Gentile, as he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are my people, there shall ye they be called the children of the living God. Right. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the Jew, a remnant shall be saved. And what he's saying here is this, a remnant is just a small portion of the lot. And he says there's going to be a few saved. And why wasn't more than that? Because God chose them. They were the apple of his eye. He gave, them, he gave them Moses and the law, and then he turned around, and after Jesus had fulfilled the law, he gave them Jesus Christ and grace, and they still will not accept him. And so this is what he's saying this morning about the remnant. Uh, let, me, let me get back to my place now. Uh, uh, Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. And so it's just a small portion. But what, what we should be so thankful for was that when Jesus died and the Jew wouldn't accept him, listen, he, t he, he called Paul and he, he called him and he told him, he said, I want you to go to the Gentile, us, the Gentile. And he said, you preach to them and you tell them about mm -hmm. uh, about me, and the, the 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 Gentile has more so accepted than the Jew did, mm -hmm. and so that this morning is the reason why that the 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 the, the, the scripture says, "For well, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves; it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast." Listen, we can be saved this morning. Uh, if we're not saved by grace, Amen. we don't have to do no works for it. We don't have to do anything, but we can just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did while He was here upon this earth. Believe in the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. But so many people this morning, even at that, they want to want to say, "No, that's not right. That can't be right. I've got to do something. I've got to work. I've got to work out my salvation." No. You don't work out your salvation because it's a free gift, and you don't you don't work nothing that's free. 
And so this morning, you can be saved. You can be saved by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, notice here, for he will, in, in verse 28, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah saith before, except the Lord of Sabah had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and had been as Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what we would have been like. And listen, Sodom and Gomorrah was the city that was destroyed right. because of the wickedness that they was going on in that in that place. And so we would have been like that. So now notice, what shall we say then? That the Gentile which follow not after righteousness has attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is faith. But Israel which follow after the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they saw it not by faith, which for by grace are you saved through faith, and they, they saw it not, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone, the stumbling stone, and, 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 and that was grace. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And so it plainly tells us here this morning how a soul can be saved is through belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith. And so this is this is some of the things this morning that we need to think about in the divine grace of God. Uh, it's Amen. always there. It will never it will never end as long as, as he's in heaven. And and listen this morning, people, uh, uh, we have we have the greatest opportunity that any nation has ever had. Amen. We still have the the, the liberty to set a building up and to come in and worship it without anybody coming in and saying, hey, you can't do it. But you that are younger, remember this, I told you, one day it may not be this way. Right. One day you may have to, to get in the caves like they did years and years ago or go into your own houses to, to, to even read the Bible because Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Right. And uh, he wants he wants everything shut down where he can get uh, get control. But listen, we know this morning that he's he's it's a losing battle with him, and, mm -hmm. and it ain't gonna be long for his little his little deal is gonna be over with, and uh, uh, he'll be cast into hell. Mm -hmm. But until then, he's gonna be an aggravator to us. He's gonna be uh, a problem for us, but that's that's his job. That's what that's what uh, God created him for. He was an angel. He was an angel, and he was in high power. But he decided, I'm going to take this place over. I'm going to take heaven over, and I'm going to be stronger than God. I'm going to be equal with God. Well, God created him for that, and so he is our adversary, the roaring lion. He desires to have you uh, beat up, banged up, bruised up, sick, anything, and not even coming to church. So that's that's our lesson this morning, and we hope that uh, something's been said that will encourage you encourage you to live a little closer to the Lord because Amen. Uh, He He died for you, and uh, uh, He rose again from the dead. He ascended to the to the Father, and one day he's going to appear. He's going to say, come up hither. Uh, and so we that are ready, we that are saved, will go out of this world and be with the, with the Lord. The rest of us, the rest of those that are not ready, will stay here to serve the devil for several, some, some years and uh, wind up in hell. So that's our, our lesson for this morning. Thank you all for listening.